Atlas, creators of the Shin Megami Tensei and Persona series, made their HD debut in 2011 with one of the most unique games of the generation, Catherine. Categorized as a puzzle platform or adventure game, but even that isn't truly enough to describe what this game is all about. Catherine incorporates minor sim elements and even what some might consider bits of horror. It's also been heavily rumored that Catherine was to be a tech demo of sorts for the now much anticipated Persona 5. Heck, Catherine's main protagonist, Vincent, even makes a minor cameo in Persona 3 Portable. Regardless of its intended purpose, the game was a success for Atlas with many fans still clamoring for a sequel. Whether we'll ever get one remains to be seen. However, if you have yet to play this magnificent game, sit back and let me tell you why it's one of the must-play games of this generation. Were you even listening? Uh... Sure. In Catherine, you play as the 30-something everyman Vincent Brooks. His typical day consists of going to work, hanging out with his friends at the local bar, and spending time with his girlfriend of many years, Catherine, spelled with a K. Catherine is an independent, driven woman who is pushing Vincent to take the next step in their relationship and get married. While Vincent loves his girlfriend, he likes to keep things simple and doesn't want to complicate his life. However, Vincent's life gets thrown for a loop when a young, beautiful blonde named Catherine, spelled with a C, comes into the picture. This Catherine is more of a free spirit and all about living for the moment. The dichotomy of the two Catherines is central to the game's plot and also what I appreciate most about it. Very few games have stories about mature themes and relationships, with even fewer executing them well, yet Catherine manages to nail it like almost no other game before it. Vincent's internal struggle about how he wants to live his life is real and relatable. Gamers have grown up now and deal with issues much like the ones Vincent is confronted with throughout the game. What's great is that you're able to shape the story based on how you interact with different characters and answer the questions. Depending on how you answer them, it will sway a meter in either of the Catherine's favor. Based on how far this meter is by the game's end, will determine who Vincent ends up with. There's actually a total of 8 different endings, which makes for some great replay value. I applaud Atlas for telling a story many other developers wouldn't dare go near. It's interesting, compelling, and well acted to boot. If you've ever played a Persona game, you're likely to recognize at least a few familiar voices, especially the now ever-present Troy Baker. He's right, you know. I know... I know I'm doing the same thing. When I mentioned that Catherine is one of the most unique games of the generation, I wasn't exactly exaggerating, and its variety of gameplay types is mainly what I was referring to. Catherine is basically split into two parts, the puzzle platformer sequences at night and the sim adventure sections during the day. The puzzle levels are basically giant towers of blocks that you push and pull to climb to the top. What makes these levels exhilarating is that the bottom is constantly falling off behind you, so you can't exactly take your sweet time. As you progress further, you'll eventually encounter boss enemies and blocks with varying properties such as slippery ice and spike traps. Make no mistake about it, Catherine is a hard game that could have you pulling your hair out. Some might be too proud to do so, but there's absolutely no shame in starting your first playthrough on easy to get used to the gameplay. The landing areas between levels provide tips and techniques to help you with the puzzles, so take note of these as often as possible. Yes, Catherine is hard, but once you figure out its nuances, it's totally thrilling to play. The threat of the level falling apart makes an otherwise normal puzzle game super intense. There's truly nothing quite like it, and you should at least give a few levels a try before making your verdict. The daytime adventure segments aren't quite as intense, but no less interesting. I kind of saw them as a reward for completing the puzzles the night before. Usually they'll begin with a relatively lengthy cutscene, often in-game, but sometimes in excellent hand-drawn anime style. They'll then be brought to the local dive bar, the Stray Sheep. Here you're free to interact with various characters, send and receive text messages, and even toss back a couple of cold ones with your pals. Interestingly enough, the more you drink here, the faster you'll climb the nightmare puzzle stages. So, you know, drink up, kids! Similar to answering questions, based on how often you talk with the Stray Sheep's patrons, affects their fates by the game's end. Some of them deserve a second lease on life, others not so much. It's all up to you though, so choose how you wish. Personally, I found both of these gameplay styles super fun and interesting. The puzzle stages get your heart pumping while the bar segments give you time to breathe and relax a little. I also find the overall design brilliant. The nightmare puzzle sequences are essentially metaphors for Vincent working out his issues you've experienced during the day. Have a talk about getting married? Be prepared for a monster bride to chase you the following night. Like I've said before, there's nothing quite like Catherine. Man, variety is the spice of life. You need to enjoy it more. Just like the wasabi-coated sushi they serve here. You know what I'm saying, bro? You suck at metaphors. The character design in Catherine foregoes photorealism in favor of a more stylized look that's quite stunning. Any fans of Shin Megami Tensei or Persona 
will immediately find it recognizable. It's almost like an anime come to life in a 3D world. Not exactly a bad style to go with. Of course, I love the art direction. It looks amazing and really helps to accentuate the vibe the game is striving for. As weird as this might be to say, Catherine is one of the most heavily atmospheric games of recent memory. The voice acting, music, and graphical style all go together so well to create a unified feel. Alice titles seem to always have top-notch voice acting, despite their relatively modest budgets. For my money, you can chalk them up another winner. Man, we look at those. What am I doing? I can't look away. In this day and age, there might be more mature-rated games released than ever before, but rarely do they actually tackle mature themes. Not only does Catherine have a mature and compelling plot, but also exemplifies truly unique gameplay. For the most part, when you play a game, it either has a great story or great gameplay, but not always both. With Catherine, you won't have to sacrifice one for the other. Here, you're given interesting gameplay to go with an equally interesting story. By now, you should be able to find Catherine somewhere to fit any gamer's budget. If you want to play something a little bit different from a developer willing to take some risks, then you won't want to miss the twisted tale of Catherine.